slap, are you? Australian legends. Hey! Sir, can you knock? What's up, everyone? I'm Adam. This is FWCI, and we're going to watch Bruce Jew, Bad Landlord. This should be fun, because the relationship between a tenant and a landlord is a very strenuous one at times. You can get good landlords, don't get me wrong, but when somebody has some sort of control over the place that you live, and where you sleep, and where you go for privacy, it can get a little bit testy. Some years ago, I worked for a uh, rental authority. So my job was to take phone calls from tenants and landlords about their dispute, you know, not with each other, but like their dispute with whoever their tenant or landlord is. And the crazy shit that you would hear from both sides, to be completely honest, was just absolutely amazing. It was such a, um, working there was really like, it, it kind of satisfied this like gossip tendency not like to like share this information like specific information with people but just like hearing people's dirty laundry <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun i'm not gonna lie so i know that tenants can be terrible and i know that landlords can also be terrible as well so we're gonna jump into it by the way patreon.com slash fwci if you want to support the channel a bit further patreon.com slash bruce Jew if you want to support the man himself ladies and gentlemen this is bruce Jew, bad landlord all right now, I don't know if you've ever had the privilege of renting a house from a local slumlord before, but, uh, <laughs> well, it's not as fun as it sounds. Now, most of you know that me and my friend Brewer lived in a crap hole duplex way back in the day. I've only told 4,000 stories about- Wow. You know what? I, have I reacted to being broke? I don't think I have. But I'm pretty sure I've reacted to all the other videos that- <laughs> It throughout my time on the YouTube. Well, this duplex just so happened to be owned by an old guy named Mark the Landlord. That was his real name. That's how we referred to him. That's how we made out the money orders when we paid him rent. He was Mark the Landlord, the most landlordish landlord of all the landlords. Now, I'm not going to say that Mark the Landlord was a piece of shit, but uh, well, actually, you know what? That is indeed what I'm going to say. Mark the Landlord was a piece of shit. He was a greedy, mean asshole, and he sure as hell didn't enjoy renting out his place to a couple of punk ass kids. I mean, granted, I can't really blame the guy. Brewer and I were definitely not the most ideal tenants he could have. Hey, you want to go fucking race bowling balls down the stairs? Oh boy, do I? Ah, my fucking leg! So no- See? See? Dumb, destructive bullshit for no reason. <laughs> Mark the landlord, so far, I'm on your side. We'll see how this goes. Knowing that we were indeed ah. incompetent assholes, Mark the landlord was always trying to stop by, spur of the moment, to make ah. sure we weren't trashing the place. Now you might be sit- not allowed to fucking do that. You gotta give them notice. There's a form and everything. Mark the landlord, you're losing me. By the way, why have we got Willem Dafoe uh, in the back there? <laughs> What's going on there? Now you might be sitting there like, well, according to chapter 5321 in the revised Ohio Rental Code, landlords need to give a 24 hour notice before entering the premises. Yeah, well not fucking Mark the landlord, that's for sure. His ass just shit all over chapter 5321 of the Ohio revised rental code. Now he'd call me up when he was en route to the duplex and he'd be like, hey, it's Mark the landlord. I'm swinging by to make sure the duplex is clean and you guys aren't fucking my shit up. Uh, okie dokie, that's fine with me. Uh, everything is definitely spick and span here, that's for sure. So as soon as I hang up the phone, I'm like, fucking red alert, red alert, the Gestapo's on its way. And then me and Brewer run throughout the house like it's the beginning of a Home Alone movie, trying to make the place look as presentable as possible. Five minutes later, Mark the landlord busts through the door like, what the hell's going on in here? Do I smell smoke? Why the hell are you guys so sweaty? Are you guys smoking cigarettes in here? And what the fuck happened to the stairs down here? Damn near looks like somebody threw a goddamn bowling ball down it. Dad, uh, we have no idea, do we, Brewer? Nope, sure don't. But it was probably that piece of shit neighbor that lives downstairs. So Mark the landlord. <laughs> Mr. Um. Oh, what was it? Ha. 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 <laughs> Some shit. Ha. Ha. What's fucked about this is even if the landlord does decide to start showing up unannounced, the only thing you can do is try and like physically say that, you know, I'm not letting you in and then call the police if he starts entering because at that point he is legally in the wrong. But then you just pissed off the landlord and now you're not going to have a house because the landlord's going to like, you know, j jack up the rent when your lease renewal comes up or some kind of bullshit tactic to like get you out of the house. And even if you like dispute it and you take it to all the like government bodies and stuff like that, the best you can hope for is to be like excused from your lease anyway, which at that point it seems like that's what the landlord wants. So he's kind of winning. It's a, it's a fucked up situation. 
Lord would then inspect our living situations like he was a goddamn social worker trying to take away our kid. Me and Brewer <laughs> would just follow behind him like obedient children. <laughs> How'd we do, Papa? Are we good little boys? Now, it was imperative during these little Gestapo inspections that we kept Mark the Landlord's ass away from the back door. And that is because behind the back door was where we kept all of our fucking garbage. Now, you might be sitting there like, why the hell did you guys keep your garbage there? Well, you see, Brewer and I were kind of, uh, what's that word? Oh, that's right. Dumb, lazy, couldn't remember to take the bins out. Which one is it? Lazy pieces of shit. And there you go. <laughs> When we would go to take out the garbage, we would just throw it out on the landing behind the back door, and we'd just deal with it later. Well, we're not gonna fucking take every single garbage bag downstairs and put it in- I'm not gonna lie, I've definitely done that in my early 20s. That exact thing, just chuck it out the back door because I lived like on the second level instead of taking it downstairs. I hear you on that one. In the garbage can? What are we, fucking training for the Iron Man competition? <laughs> well, lo and behold, the nightmare scenario happens one day when Mark the Landlord's over inspecting our shit. All of a sudden, abruptly, he's just like, well, I guess the place looks good enough so I can't evict you assholes yet. I'll just head out the back door. See you later. All right then, Mark, you piece of shit. You have a good day. We'll see you next time. Wait a minute, the back door? Oh, God damn it! don't go out the back door. This dude opens the back door. And what he sees is not only a week's worth of garbage out there, but two weeks of garbage out there because we forgot about fucking garbage day the week prior. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the bane of my existence. I was terrible remembering to get the bins out. I've done that like early morning half naked bin run just to like get it out on the curbside before like 6 a.m. A, a few times in my life. Uh, oh man, how did all that fucking garbage get there? Must have been that piece of shit neighbor downstairs again, I tell you what. Now, I don't know if you've ever been face to face with your landlord and, uh, you know, verbally threatened with eviction before, but it's not nearly as fun as it sounds. Somehow we convinced Mark the landlord that this was a one-time thing. Normally we're good little boys. We fucking take the garbage downstairs. We train for the Iron Man. We do all that happy horse shit. And guess what? It'll never happen again. Thankfully his ass didn't kick us out on the street that day. But needless to say, our little tenant landlord relations were a little strained after that. Well, not too long after fucking hashtag Garbage Gate 2009 happened, <laughs> things between us and Mark the Landlord became even worse. Because that's when Mark the Landlord started to have his crackhead brother come around and do some light maintenance to the duplex. Now, granted, I can't say this guy was a crackhead for sure. I mean, he didn't just like come up to me and be like, hey, it's me, Mark's brother. You know, the crackhead? Anyways, I'm here to put up a new eaves trough. No, he didn't do anything like that, but uh, he was sketchy as hell to say the least. Well, on one particular day, Mark's crackhead brother is in the basement dicking around with the furnace, and right next to that furnace is a bunch of boxes filled with my old toys from childhood. Well, the next day I go down in the basement, and all of those boxes have suddenly vanished. What? So I go ahead and give Mark the landlord a nice little telephone call. Hello, shitty rental properties. This is Mark the landlord speaking. Uh, yeah, hi, Mark. Uh, I'm pretty sure your crackhead brother just stole a bunch of my stuff. What? What are you talking about? He didn't steal anything, and he's not a crackhead, all right? He's a fucking pillhead, and there's a big difference. So get it straight. Yeah, well, a bunch of boxes by the furnace are not here anymore. Uh, Man, boxes full of his childhood toys. I saw a Tamagotchi. I saw a WWF on there. If you've watched this channel long enough, you know me. You know I love my action figures and my, you know, toys and shit like that. And that would, that triggered me right there. I was like, nah, fuck that. Mark the landlord, get your pillhead brother the fuck away from my furnace and my house. Well, he did say he threw a bunch of garbage out because it was cluttered up around the furnace. That bunch of garbage was my childhood, you slumlord piece of shit. Yeah, that's right. All my toys from my childhood. Are you kidding me? Tyler's shit from the 90s. <laughs> Tamagotchis, WWF action figures. That's a big box. It's a big box of WWF action figures. Pour one out for Tyler's collection. We're now gone. We're talking my sweet Fisher Price castle, my mini football. Mini football helmets. You know what? I don't follow NFL or anything, but as a kid, I've never followed a sport that required people to wear helmets. But as a kid, I would have been so in for that. They look great. All helmet collection, my goddamn neglected ass generic Tamagotchi. <laughs> all probably. <laughs> Generic Tamagotchi. I had one too. <laughs> All right. Weird side tangent. I called mine Yakless Toast because 
that's a lyric that I thought was in a Warren G song and I don't know why I just called it that. Regulating state to state, coast to coast. It's all about the collard greens. Yak, let's toast. I wrote um, white out on there, like liquid paper and wrote yakless toast on there. And it was like a cheap budget one from a place called Cunningham's Warehouse. He'd taken to a pawn shop somewhere so Mark's crackhead brother could get his next fix. Hey, how much can I get for this 2D from the Facts of Life lunchbox? Oh, fuck, dude. I don't know. A buck fifty? You got a deal. Well, after that fiasco, me and Brewer start thinking maybe it's time to move out of the duplex and onto greener pastures. Surely we can find a better fucking rental agreement somewhere with some nicer stipulations. Stipulation one, Gestapo inspections whenever I want. Stipulation two, my pillhead brother can have what he wants. Stipulation three, no Ouija boards. Don't make my shit haunted. <laughs> well, what finally pushed us over the edge was when one day I went to go take a shower and realized I couldn't because the water was shut off. <gasps> now, if you've seen my being broke video that I've made 4,000 years ago, yes, you know that, that us getting yes. utilities turned off was basically a fucking lifestyle for us back then. However, what I failed to mention in that video was that the water bill was never our responsibility. Per Chapter 5321, Ohio Rental Code, a landlord's obligated to supply running water. But of course we know how Mark the Landlord feels about Chapter 5321, now don't wow. we? But regardless, I give him another phone call, and I'm like, Hey Mark the Landlord, the most peculiar thing just happened. We don't have any running water. And Mark the Landlord's response was, Oh yeah, I know. The uh, water company said they were doing some work on the pipes, so they had to turn the water off. Now, at the time, that seemed reasonable to me. I mean, right. I was just an 18-year-old kid at the time. I didn't know dick about shit. I was like, fine, that's all right. No more water. No big deal. Well, imagine my surprise when a few days go by, and we still don't... Days? Oh, no. <laughs> no, wow, wow. Living, if you ask me. I mean, we're fucking dumping flat Mountain Dew into our toilet just so we could flush our shit down. What is this, Pakistan? So I call the water company to see if they could give me some sort of a timetable for when our water's gonna be back on, and that's when they decide to inform me that we have an unpaid bill, and that's why our water was shut off in the first place. So I hang up the phone, slightly perplexed, and then it dawns on me. Ah, that motherfucker lied to me. So once again, I call up my good buddy, Mark the Landlord, and I'm like, hey Mark, guess what? Just got off the phone with the water company. Company. According to them, you're a lying piece of shit. All right, all right, take it easy. Look, I was gonna pay the water bill tomorrow, all right? It was high as hell. You guys keep flushing the toilets over there. What, do you guys got fucking Crohn's disease? Well, for me, that was it. That was the last straw. I can deal with Gestapo inspections and crackheads stealing my Pez dispensers. <laughs> but if I gotta fill a toilet bowl up with Pepsi products just to take a shit, well, that's where I draw the goddamn line. Me and Brewer packed up our shit, and a few weeks later, we moved on to greener pastures. And by greener pastures, I mean an even shittier house with, believe it or not, an even shittier landlord. But if you want to hear that story, you're just going to have to sit around and wait for fucking Bad Landlord Part 2. Marvin, the piece of shit landlord. <laughs> Bad Landlord Part 2. Mark, the POS landlord with special guest, a real-life pillhead. <laughs> because that is an entire separate story. The end. Wow, I feel for him on that one. Two bad landlords, that's not good. So I had a landlord once who did a whole bunch of renovations on like an entire apartment block that I don't think he was qualified to do. Uh, I think I got kind of screwed there. Not screwed, but I got inconvenienced really, really hard. And now that I know more about the law and how, well not the law, but how the legislation works, uh, I definitely could have been like saying, hey, Knock my rent down, please, if you're going to be doing all this um, untrained <laughs> maintenance or it, upgrades and stuff. It's an ugly, ugly industry with so much on the line. And yeah, I, it's it's not great being a renter. I do rent and thank God uh, we've got a pretty decent deal. Uh, although the place is going to get demolished at some point and we're going to have to move out and we don't know when that's going to be. We've been waiting three years <laughs> for it to happen. But let me know in the comments your experience with a bad landlord. I want to hear all the stories. Maybe I'll even read some of them on the next Bruce Jew reaction that I record. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Patreon.com slash FWCI. Patreon.com slash Bruce Jew. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.